Your first job is arguably one of the hardest jobs to get. You've likely just graduated school, so you don't have much context outside of the academic world. This will likely be your first time you're looking for a full-time job or interviewing for a full-time job. And most likely, you don't have much experience as well. So essentially, you have to venture out into the real world and sell yourself with little to no uh, work experience. No one can blame you if you're a little bit anxious about it. That's why I decided to make this video to give you some solid tips on how you can set yourself for success to find your first ever job in tech. So the first thing is academics. Make sure you have decent GPA, decent scores, but if you don't have a perfect 4.0 or a high 3.9, don't worry too much about it. As long as you have pretty decent grades in your computer science and math classes, and you have a solid foundation of data structures and algorithms, you should be good. So prioritize those over any other classes and make sure you pay special attention to courses that have large or complicated projects. The next thing is programming language. Stick to what you've worked with the longest. If your school taught you Java or C++ or whatever that language is, that's fine. Don't stress too much about it. I know a lot of young software engineers try to pick the latest stack or the latest programming language because they think that it looks good on the resume. In fact, that may end up hurting you because you won't have the expertise built up or enough practice on the programming language to actually do well in your interviews. So don't think that just because you have six different programming languages listed in your resume, it will look good. In fact, if I'm interviewing a fresh out of college candidate and I see them list six or seven programming languages, it's actually a red flag and I can actually easily probe into those languages and see how much you actually know. So stick to one or two that you know and put that in your resume. If you did end up doing something kind of oldish like C or whatever and you think that the um, industry you're applying to doesn't really use C or whatever programming language you're, you've worked with, then that's fine. You can switch to something else. Pick something simple and common like Python or JavaScript and make sure you get enough practice with it before you actually start interviewing. So the third important thing is your projects. Definitely work on some interesting academic projects. I know most of the times academic projects uh, are there to teach you certain concepts so they can be boring and bland, but you don't always have to follow what the course material suggests. You can come up with your own ideas that are more interesting and relate to the real world and still apply the things that you've learned in those classes. So don't be afraid to venture out and kind of try to make something real world. Also, your side projects don't have to be anything life altering. At this point, you're just in school, so you definitely don't have knowledge about real life scale or how things work in the real world, so that's fine. Just make sure whatever you work on displays your passion for building things. And that way, whenever you interview eventually and you have to talk about something interesting you have worked on or some of your past projects, you can actually show your passion towards whatever you've worked on. The last thing you want to do is do some bland academic projects and not really have much passion or um, fail to display excitement towards them when your interview actually happens. So the next thing is to start building your professional network early. I know we often think about professional network as something we build when we start working in a professional context, but that cannot be far from the truth. Your professors, tutors, advisors, classmates, these are all great people to have in your network. Uh, your professors have either worked at some tech companies before or they have had done academic research with multiple companies before. Your advisors and tutors, they also have a strong professional network that you can leverage. Your senior classmates will eventually graduate and work with the companies that you want to work on. So all of these people can provide you with referrals. A referral is the biggest boost you can get for your chances at actually getting a job. So make sure you start building your network early. So the next step is to start learning how to build a good resume early on. I know when you're a freshman or a sophomore, you probably won't have that much to put in the resume, but that's even more reason to start building it early so that you can actually see it progress to something solid and you can tweak it enough time so that when you actually need to apply for a job, you have something solid and not something put together at the last moment. I have a ton of videos on how to create solid resumes where I 
review a bunch of resumes that you guys have sent me and I review my own resumes through the year to kind of show you tips and tricks about how to write solid resumes. So definitely check that out. I'm not going to cover that too much in this video. While at the topic of resumes, also create a solid LinkedIn profile. We live in a world that is very socially connected and LinkedIn is one of the top places where professionals go to network and uh, recruiters are scanning LinkedIn uh, to find potential candidates and stuff like that. So definitely the old age of paper resumes isn't there anymore. So whatever you have on your paper resume, definitely reflect that in your LinkedIn profile as well. The next thing is to get an internship. You should start thinking about an internship probably from your second year in college. Even though you may not land one until maybe your third year or fourth year, having an internship is the easiest way to get a full-time job. Think about it. When you generally apply for a position, you have maybe two, three, four, five, however many that is, 45 minute interviews where uh, you have to impress the interviewers or show off your skills and they have to evaluate you. The process isn't perfect and it always doesn't work out for you, but the process to get an interview tends to be much easier and the bar you need to meet because you're still in college is much lower. So if you do land an internship, you have anywhere from one to three to four months to prove that you're a good candidate, which ends up being a much better way to show off your skills than a few interviews that are like 45 minutes to one hour. And many top tech companies also have explorer programs where if you're not really sure about pursuing computer science full time, you can actually get an explorer internship early on, maybe in your uh, sophomore year or something like that, where you can just try out to see how computer science is in the real world. So that can not only benefit you in terms of exploring the space, but also give you a follow up opportunity to get an actual internship that can eventually turn into a full time job offer. So definitely pay attention to the internship. So the next thing is to leverage hiring events. So at this point, you've probably gotten decent grades, you've um, leveraged your network, uh, you've maybe gotten an internship or two, and now it's actually time to apply for a few full-time jobs. Don't just go to career websites and just like blindly send applications. That may work once or twice, but some of the biggest tech companies get so many applicants that it's impossible to weed out every single one of them through the career portal, even though that is the idea. Uh, the volume just makes it really difficult. However, if you can leverage hiring events where companies actually go looking for candidates, you can actually get a hold of someone working in the company or sometimes even have an interview on the hiring event itself and get a full-time offer um, just on the spot. So definitely leverage that. If your school isn't big enough or isn't in an area that has the um, hiring events, uh, do look into a lot of local community-driven or state-driven career fairs as well. Those are free for everyone to attend and you can definitely go attend those. So the next thing is to not pay too much attention to what the job description or the requirement says. So if you actually decided to apply for a job listing through the career portal or some other job listing, most of the times as a beginner software engineer, you realize that uh, the requirements or the expectations from you is pretty high. Um, they will always ask for way more years of experience than you can possibly have as a fresh graduate. Uh, but the reason these job listings are that way is because they want to cast out a wider net, interview a bunch of people and see who fits the uh, job description or their budget or um, whatever other criteria they may have. So if they immediately limit the scope of the job by making the requirements very specific, they will only get very few set of candidates to interview and that may not be good um, for their overall scope of hiring. So if you see a job listing that has a few more years of uh, experience requirements, don't be discouraged by that and still apply. Um, you have nothing to lose. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is you'll get an interview and you'll feel like, oh, you were totally underprepared and they actually did want a lot of experience. Um, and just as long as you're honest in your resume, think about it. If they know that you 100% do not have the experience to the job posting that you're applying for, they won't even ask you for an interview. So it's a win-win situation and um, 
you'll be surprised how many times you'll apply for a position that seems way beyond your scope and you'll actually get invited for a job interview and maybe even end up landing the offer. So the next tip I have for you is to actually prepare for your interviews. You'll be surprised how many times I interview candidates that have solid resumes and seem very smart, but they just didn't prepare for the interviews and that cost them the job. Uh, make sure you understand which company you're applying to, understand the culture they have, the values they hold uh, closely, um, how they conduct interviews. For, for example, if they're startup-ish, they may focus more on the specific of the framework or the programming language that they want to hire you for. So focus more on preparing on those. If there are big tech companies like Facebook, Microsoft, Google, they probably don't care much about the specifics of the programming language and instead focus on algorithmic or design question. Although as a fresh graduate, you probably won't see that many design questions. But either way, focus on preparing for the interviews according to the company you're applying for. Also, pay attention to how companies like to conduct their interviews. How Microsoft conducts interviews is completely different from how Facebook conducts their interviews, which is completely different from how Amazon conducts their interview. You get the idea. Make sure you understand those, the time limits, how many questions you're expected to answer, what they value, whether it's no bugs or speed or just the intellectual problem solving approach. Different companies value different things. And if you're prepared by understanding those things, then you can change your approach and make it specific to the company you're interviewing for. That way you'll increase your chances for actually succeeding in the interview. Also, learn your fundamentals and technical interview structure. I have an entire video series on technical interview prep where I explain exactly how to prepare for all types of interviews based on your experience and level. The last tip I have for you is to never give up. You'll probably need to apply for a bunch of companies, probably won't hear back from a bunch of them, you'll interview for a few, you will fail a bunch of them, and finally you'll land your dream job. So when you do get rejected or when you don't hear back from companies, don't get discouraged, keep trying, keep learning from your mistakes, keep tweaking your process, revisit all these tips and make sure you change your approaches. Whenever things go wrong, do some reflection and figure out what went wrong and try to improve that in your next uh, interview or next application and eventually you'll get there. When I first graduated college, I applied to, I think, 53 companies and did not even hear back from a single one. Forget interviews. Uh, it's because I made a lot of mistakes that I'm telling you not to make in this video. So uh, I have learned from my mistakes and I'm making this video so that you don't end up making the same mistakes that I made. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other tip that has worked well for you. Check out this video if you want to learn how to create good resumes and check out this other video if you're interested in my 20 year software engineering journey where I actually share a lot of these mistakes that I made and how I learned and eventually fixed them. Thanks for stopping by and staying till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.